What's going on guys? National Master James Canty the third here with chess.com and today we have game of the day. With the white pieces we have Stockfish and with the black pieces we have Scorpio. Let's get right into it. Now Stockfish plays e4 and Scorpio responds with d5 in Scandinavian fashion. Welcome to the Scandinavian. And after e takes d5, knight to f6. So you do have queen takes d5 which is one of the main moves but this one is a little bit more flexible and you see this with the stronger players of course just being a very strong engine here. Knight of Six was actually the move here in this position and then d4 which is a very standard move here this is the way i would play against the scandinavian as well just the standard move put a pawn in the center guys always have something in the center and after knight takes d5 black is anticipating white to actually play a move like c4 which is very common here but the problem is that this resembles the aliyekin type of position where of course we're going to give up the center or at least black is going to give up the center now in hopes to attack it later with pieces and pawns because white overextends himself a little bit so now knight to xd5 is on the board knight f3 is the move from stockfish just very solid here we're not going to go for anything wild yet we're just going to play knight f3 and develop our pieces bishop f5 instead of bishop to g4 which is a possible move and we follow up with bishop to e2 and just again play solid here and see what black does after bishop to f5 because we, we want to get the bishop outside the pawn chain instead of playing e6 he could have also played bishop g4 like we said before Bishop f5 was the move chosen. And after bishop f5, we choose bishop to d3. Stockfish goes with, hey, get the pieces off the board or get at least this piece off the board because this, this is a very strong bishop on a very nice diagonal that we kind of wanted ourselves. So we go bishop to d3 to actually challenge the bishop here. Of course, there's a swap. Bishop takes, queen takes, and then e6 here, guys. A rule of thumb is that every time you trade a bishop, you should put, if you're left with one bishop, you should put the pawns on the same color of that bishop you traded. So in this, in this sense, we trade at the light square bishop so where do our pawns go class okay raise the hand it goes on the light squares because we traded our light square bishop so e6 c6 knight to d7 maybe even g6 that's kind of weird playing e6 and g6 sometimes due to the diagonal uh differences here you have you may have to choose a diagonal sometimes and one diagonal might be a little bit weaker so you have to be careful but the general sense is that you're going to put your pawns on the light squares so this bishop is very active and becomes a monster now after e6 we have castles here and then c5 from black playing a little bit aggressive here a little bit aggressive just attacking the center and uh, trying to see what white's going to do next. After C C5, we have bishop to G5 here. I like this move a lot. It's developing. It's provoking black to do something. Are they going to play F6, which is a very bad move here? And maybe bishop B7. Maybe we trade some pieces off. But at the same time, we are ahead on development. And you need to take advantage of that with the white pieces here. Queen to D7 here. Interesting move. Maybe even trying for knight to C6, H6, and G5. And castling queen side, which is something that happens in these lines. If... The pawn was uh, oh, not on c5 or not on c2. If the c file was actually open, then this would be uh, a no, a not ever happening kind of thing. You're not going to castle or you shouldn't castle on the c file when it's wide open. But in this case, it's it's not wide open. So after queen to d7, we have knight to c3 here just to get the pieces off the back rank, connect the rooks and challenge this knight as well. Guys, we're ahead on development. When you're ahead on development, you want to kind of swap sometimes the pieces that black or your opponent has this actually developed so you can just have a better position here after knight to c3 attacking the knight black goes for f6 now i know these are strong engines guys but when you see a move like this on the board you should already be a little bit happy with your position because now this this is compromised you've pushed a pawn in front of your king especially if you're planning to castle this is also extremely weak at this point and then you may have to make moves like king f7 that may may not work honestly especially this being vulnerable doubling on the file this is already trouble for black Bishop to e3 and Black chose to take the knight instead of the bishop here. Most people, especially humans, would just take the bishop just because you're getting two bishops. You're getting the bishop pair here. But I think um, actually after taking, you do have just pawn takes and opening up the rook file. Two pawns in the center is better than one. White's just doing great in every aspect. And after knight takes c3, queen takes, guys, it is clear as day. Who would you rather be in this position? You want to ask yourself this a lot of times when you are playing games, on your own games, and you're like, hey, who would I rather be in this position? That will tell you kind of who's ahead on development or what should be done with the other party depending on what's going on after queen takes c3 c takes d4 he's just trading stuff off and then knight takes d4 and then e5 now after e5 guys i want you to pause the video here what would you actually play in this position the move here guys if you said rook a to d1 you are 100 correct rook a 
to d1. The king is in the center of the board, guys. There's a book out, Art of Attack, the attack on the uncastled king, which is this here, or the attack on the castle king here, guys. Rook A to D1 is a monstrous move by a monster engine against another monster engine here. Rook A to D1 playing such a very strong move here, daring you to take this knight. What does he do? You would all you always want to expect your opponent to test you on your theory, and this is exactly what happens. He takes D4. He says, I want to see it. Hey, I might be getting crushed, but at least I want to see it and make sure you're on your game. So after E takes D4, Bishop takes D4 here, and now the king is wide open. Where are you going to go? I don't know. There is nowhere to run. There's nowhere to hide. Bishop takes F6 is coming. The king is in the center. It's in the middle of the street. Oh my goodness, what happens next? So knight to C6, and then here it is. Bishop takes F6. Whoa, the king is looking crazy. Is There's checks everywhere. The queen is hanging. I don't even know what the evaluation is here. You don't want to know. Bishop takes F6, and then queen to F5. Already over here, guys. How do you finish this off? Pause the video slightly. Try to find a small combination here. But while you're doing that, we're going to move on for everyone else. Rook F to E1 check. And then King F7. And how do you proceed here, guys? I mean, this is a, this is insane. This is a wild position, right? Wild. Like, how do you do you queen c4, queen b3? I mean, rook d3, uh, f3, bishop h4. Like, what do you actually do here? What are your best checks? What if you check him and he takes on f6? Like, you're you're down material here, and you need to be quick about this attack. This is what Stockfish did. Rook to e3. So if you take this with the queen, I'm going to play rook f3 and have a nice day. It should be simple after that. Now, he actually chose g takes f6, which is the critical test here, the challenge. And now, guys, if you stop and look at this, Stockfish is down two pieces right now, guys. Two pieces. Oh, my goodness. He's down both minor pieces. Both minor pieces. Now, because these pieces aren't developed here for black, these rooks and this bishop, technically, right now, he's not down anything. Right now, he's actually up a piece. Uh, Stockfish is actually up a piece right now based off the piece activity. Now, if these pieces were active, if they ever get active, that's going to be a problem. So our goal, especially if you guys are looking to sacrifice material, should be to keep the ball rolling. Keep attacks going. Don't let them breathe, right? So what do we do? Queen c4 check. Queen c4, you can't go to the file, can't really block with anything, so you have to move your king. King g6, rook g3 check. Keep the ball rolling. King h5, uh, and I think after king h6 is just trouble after uh, queen h4 and then queen back over to f4. If king h6, and then uh, queen to f7 check is what he chose here. King h6 is trouble as well after rook check and rook h5 after king to g5. Then we have uh, king h4. The king is in the middle of the street, guys. I have a king on h4. What a game, right? Rook h3 check, king to g4, check him, everything is checked. When you do it with check, it always might be made. So try to look for as many checks as possible, and you have to see which one is the best one after due to calculation. King f4, rook h4 check. If king here, rook check again, and it's just going to be some problems uh, everywhere that he goes. King e3, oh, sorry, king e3, uh, rook h4, and then king e3, and then queen to c4. So now we're cutting off the king as much as we can here. Rook checks, I mean, rook check queen check, like oh, everything checks, okay? And then after bishop to c5 here, guys, because he's like, if I'm going to move my king, I'm going to do it with check. What do you play in this position? Finish it off. Can you finish it off, guys? If I give you five seconds here, can you find the move? White to move. Here it is. Rookie four check. He ends it right here. Rookie four, what do you do about it? What do you even do? What is your next move? It's forced. Queen takes e4, and then queen takes e4, mate. And Stockfish says... This is how you handle the Scandinavian. Now, of course, this our very strong engines playing in the Scandinavian is a very strong opening as well. If you know what you're doing there, it is a certified. You just got to know what you're doing. But Stockfish just showed a beautiful display of attacking chess here with the Scandinavian. And this was uh, today's game of the day with chess.com, guys. I'm National Master James Canty III, and I will see you guys on the next video.